There's two kinds of programmers, even though I've added a new one this year. You'll, it's a brand new kind of programmer <laughs> based on my recent experience with customers. So the first one is complexifiers, adverse to re reduction. How many knows complexifiers that just like to write a shitload of code for no real reason, right? And keep writing it over and over again. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure if you are a complexifier, you're not going to admit it, right? <laughs> so their instincts are to turn simple assignments into quagmires and reject simple ideas until they read buried in layers of abstraction. They take pride in consuming more bandwidth, time, and patience than needed, and expect rewards for it. So what you should really strive for, of course, is the simplifier, thrive on concision. You know, when I write any code, especially now that I'm more high level, that I want to make sure I write code that pretty much anybody can understand once I'm done with it, right? Even a junior should be able to understand it, right? And now that I'm working with customers, I kind of understand their level of programming and, you know, I write it so they can understand it even though I would write something different, right? So um, I want to make sure I can write the code. It's easy to understand and move on, right? Because I don't want to be stuck writing the same thing over and over again. I want to write a new feature, right? So this is what I strive and always have strived for. And that's why I'm really passionate about coding standards, because this is, helps you with coding standards. So here's my new type of programmer. <laughs> Here's some more stuff to keep it simple, stupid. If the method's too complex, seems big, complicated, it needs to be refactored. A lot of people ask me, well, how big is too big? And I know we have large ass monitors now, but if it goes off the, the bottom of your editor, it's probably too big, right? And you need to rethink things. Um, and for me, it's especially important because I, as I said in my last talk, is that everything I write I assume is going to be reused someday. And so I need to make it like that. Because um, no matter, uh, this has happened, you know, someone comes and goes, okay, we're going to write this project and it's going to be a web project. And I go, okay, well, it, is it always going to be a web project? Yeah. <laughs> then they run up to you someday and say, well, now we need to support the iPhone or mobile or something, right? And you've coded everything in your website you're screwed, right? And it's gonna take a long time to yank that all out and do it the way you were supposed to do it in the first place, right? I don't know the exact percentage, but most of your code should not be in the application. It should all be in reusable DLLs, or what I call APIs. The only code in your app should be what interacts with the freaking user, right? That's it, everything else should be in DLLs. And if you do that, you'll thank me someday. So we factor, we factor, always code for reusability, low cyclomatic complexity. Cyclomatic complexity, and if you use tools like uh, Code Write or Analyze and Visual Studio will tell you what, or refactoring tools, will tell you what your cyclomatic complexity is for each method or class or whatever. That number, basically in the end, that number means how many paths your code can, you know, can go through in your method, right? But the, what that really means is the minimum number of unit tests you need to write for that method, right? So if you saw that one method in my last talk had complexity of what, 900 or something? <laughs> Crazy, right? So minimum 900 unit tests for one method. And you actually need to write more. So how many people here do unit testing? That's better. Who likes to do unit testing? Yes, exactly. So you want to keep those numbers low, not only for reusability, but unit testing. Okay. Um, so look at that number. It's uh, very important. Keep generics in mind, of course. And if you're stuck or you, you're not really sure if you're doing it right, ask somebody. Somebody will come up and go, oh, yeah, do this. That's what I do all the time. Right? I go, oh, yeah. You know, the heavens, the gates opened, you know? And so because you look at something so long, you start, you know, prior programming, code reviews, all these help.